Greetings Earthlings. Now I'm going to be talking about X-Men Days of Future Past and this will contain spoilers but of course you already knew that because you're from the future. Now the main thing I'm going to be talking about in this video is the references it makes to drug addiction, race relations and time travel. Now starting with drug addiction. Days of Future Past makes a few references to drug use where we have Hank who represents the moderate uh, user. Uh, he takes enough to keep himself balanced. Ch while Charles, Charles Xavier, he becomes dependent on the medication. Now Hank tells Logan that Charles has lost too much. Uh, Raven, Eric, the teacher's being drafted to the Vietnamese war. So this provides the reason for Xavier not wanting to deal with his pain. After a series of events, we then see Xavier dealing with withdrawal symptoms as the medication is wearing off. Hank, now playing the parts of the dealer, is offering him extra because he'd missed a dose, while Logan, the therapist or friend or concerned family member, is explaining why he is important and why he should not throw away his gifts. Uh, Charles then throws down the syringe and embraces life and all that he has to offer to it. Now this scene I felt was oversimplified. I understand that addiction wasn't the focus of the film, but it would have been more affecting had they shown more of a struggle between him not wanting to use the medication anymore, but also not wanting to deal with the pain. But what I thought was interesting, however, was that after that part, when Xavier is using Cerebro, he can't because he feels he is still broken. Logan gets him to look into his mind where he sees pain and suffering. Logan tells him to look past that until he gets to future Xavier who tells him that he can bear the pain to make people hope again. So perhaps it's not as simplified as it initially seemed. I think the message here is that the will to overcome an addiction is just part of the journey. Understanding that the pain will always be a part of you and learning to bear that pain is the next part of that journey. Now, Days of Future Past also makes a few references to race relations. It's mostly set in 1973, which means between the events of First Class and Days of Future Past, the United States has seen three Civil Rights Acts signed. That's 1964, which prohibited the discrimination by federal and state governments and public places. 1965, which was the Voting Rights Act. And 1968, which was the Fair Housing Act. Plus all the other Civil Rights Acts signed since 1866. So by 1973, the United States has only very minor, if any, discrimination issues. Even the tour guide uh, in the Pentagon remarks that uh, off camera to a child wanting to use a toilet that the building was made during segregation, so there are double the number of bathrooms. During being an operative word, as in to say that segregation is no longer the case. But what we see is mutants being discriminated against, targeted, singled out and experimented on. When Dr. Trask reads Xavier's dissertation, which discussed how Homo sapiens extinguished the Homo neanderthal and used this as the basis for needing to terminate the mutants, what we learn from this is that there is a fear of difference. And this highlights one of the big issues with race relations, which is it is possible to change legislation, but until people's attitudes change, until people as a whole can move away from our fear of difference, there would always be an issue with discrimination. Now for those who don't know, I happen to be a time traveling mad scientist experimenting with ancient hieroglyphics telling stories defined by pictures and if you'd like to know more check the link in the description. But suffice to say, it's something I know a little bit about. Now the question that's asked in the film is can the future be changed? If we know something bad is going to happen, can we go back in time to make sure that it doesn't? And the answer they seem to give at the end of the film is, yes it can. But let's take a closer look. Now when Kitty Pride has explained to Xavier how she sends Bishop's conscious back in time to the, his younger body to warn the others of the coming sentinel attack, so that they know not to go to where they were going, she said they leave before they ever knew they were there, to which Warpath affirms because they never were. Later, when Pride is about to send Logan's mind back to 1973, she said that when he wakes up, what he had done would become the only history the rest of them would ever know, and only he would remember the alternate history. Now, the film doesn't delve into this, but consider this for a moment. If Logan remembers, even if he is the only one that does, then it must have still happened. We can imagine things that haven't happened. 
we can envision things we believe are going to happen, but we can only remember what has actually happened. So Logan remembering the war and all the mutants being killed still happens. But at the end of the film, he does wake up, presumably, although not specified, in 2023. There's a pretty futuristic looking alarm clock and one of the first people he sees is a bearded Bobby Drake. The school is operational, Jean Grey is alive, as is Scott Summers. So it seems like everything has been fixed and that the first three X-Men movies just don't count anymore. So if Logan succeeded, how can he still remember? Now this is where I get a little speculative. Um, what I think is happening is each time Bishop's conscience is sent back to warn the others, they create a new alternate reality. Bishop's memories are from the old reality which still exists, which means the mutants still get slaughtered each time. That doesn't change. It just creates a new world where it didn't happen. Likewise with Logan, his memories are from a reality that still exists. He just created one where the war was avoided, but the war still happens. The mutants still get killed. Kitty Pride still sends Bishops back in all the other realities, creating exponentially more realities, all where the mutants get killed. So in the end, they actually cause more mutants to die than they save. And that is what I think of X-Men Days of Future Past. To let me know if you agree or if you disagree, if you think there's something that I've missed. If you liked this video, please click like, share, and all that fun stuff. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos. Check out other videos on the channel as well. But that is all for now, so thank you for watching. And until next time, just because somebody stumbles and loses their path, doesn't mean they're lost forever. Or are they? Hmm.